Water is a vital part of a properly functioning retina. Water facilitates fundamental life-supporting functions within the retina, and in fact, without water, nerve signal transmission itself would not be possible. In order for these life-supporting functions to be accomplished, the retina must have some way of moving water around so that adequate water is present when needed and so that excess water may be removed. In this video, we'll look at topics relevant to the routine movement of water in the body, and then we'll turn more specifically to look at sites of water movement in the retina. There are many terms used to describe the fluids found in most types of bodily tissue. We'll use this representation of a purple capillary and several adjacent cells to help define some of these terms. Intracellular fluid is fluid that is found within cell bodies. Extracellular fluid is a general term for fluid that is found anywhere outside of a cell body. The spaces in between cells are called interstitial spaces and are filled with interstitial fluid. This fluid, which is primarily composed of water, is important for facilitating the movement of dissolved nutrients and waste. Separating the interstitial fluid from the intracellular fluid is the cell membrane, represented here by the black outline. The blood and its fluid component, called plasma, is separated from the body tissue by the walls of the capillary, which are made up of endothelial cells. So in terms of the retina, there are several types of water-based fluids which are related, in one way or another, to the retina. The blood plasma, as contained in the retinal vessels, and the choroid, the interstitial fluid found in between the nerve cells of the retina, the fluid within the cells of the retina, that is, the intracellular fluid, and the vitreous, the jelly-like substance composed primarily of water, which borders on the surface of the retina. Each of these retinal fluids is a mixture of water and various dissolved substances. The dissolved substances are called solutes. The mixture of water and solutes is a water-based type of solution. In moving water from place to place, the body makes use of a very important behavior of solutions called osmosis. In this illustration, a container of water is divided by a green semi-permeable membrane. Semi-permeable membranes allow the passage of water from one side of the membrane to the other, but they do not allow the passage of solute from one side to the other. When a solute is added to one side of the container, the water on that side becomes less concentrated and the water from the more concentrated side tends to flow over to the less concentrated side. I think of this as water following the solute. If you add more solute, even more water crosses the barrier. On the other hand, if you add solute to the left side, you begin to make water cross the barrier in the opposite direction. If you could remove the solute from the left side, water again would cross the membrane to the right side. And finally, if you removed all the solute, the water levels would even out. So by controlling the level of solute in the fluids, you can control the movement of water through the membrane. The body can do this same type of thing. By controlling the solute on either side of a semi-permeable membrane, such as a cell membrane, the body controls the water flow through that membrane. Now let's turn to see how the body controls water movement over a capillary wall. Fluid movement from the capillaries into the tissues of the body is often explained in terms of Starling forces. Starling is the last name of the scientist who first proposed this way of thinking about water movement into and out of the capillaries of the body. So again, in this illustration, there is a purple capillary whose blood flow is from left to right with the interstitial spaces in orange. One force that tends to drive water out of the capillary is blood pressure. The pressure exerted by the blood as it is forced by the pumping action of the heart to flow through the circulatory vessels. The force of the blood pressing out against the walls of the capillary will be represented with a yellow arrow this pressure is a type of hydrostatic pressure. As blood moves through the vessels of the body, this pressure is gradually diminished. Even along the short course of the capillaries, the pressure of the blood tending to push water out of the capillary weakens significantly. 
A separate force tends to pull water back into the capillaries. This force is based on osmosis and is due to the presence of a certain type of solute in the blood plasma, which is usually not found in the interstitial fluid. Earlier we saw that when a solute was added to one side of a container of water, which was divided by a semi-permeable membrane, the water tended to make its way over to the side with the solute. A similar situation occurs here where two fluids, interstitial fluid on the outside of the capillary and blood plasma on the inside are separated by a semipermeable membrane, the capillary wall. The blood plasma contains a significant amount of several solutes called plasma proteins which are not able to cross the capillary wall. These plasma proteins tend to pull water in from the interstitial fluid. This pulling force due specifically to the plasma proteins is called oncotic pressure and this oncotic pressure represented here with green arrows stays roughly the same over the entire course of the capillaries. So then as the blood begins its course through the capillary the hydrostatic pressure of blood being forced through the blood vessels tends to be greater than the opposing oncotic pressure. This results in an outflow of water from the capillary Conversely, near the end of the capillary, hydrostatic pressure has diminished to the point where oncotic pressure dominates and the water tends to flow into the capillary. Now let's turn more specifically to sites of water movement in the retina. One site of water movement in the retina is the retinal capillaries. At the retinal capillary wall, water is subject to these same starling forces but in the retina there are some unusual circumstances to consider. You may recall that the retinal capillaries are the site of the inner blood retinal barrier. Tight junctions in between the endothelial cells make it much more difficult for water to pass out of or into the capillary. Tight junctions also impede the free flow of some types of solutes, smaller, electrically charged particles that otherwise would pass across the capillary wall. A difference in the concentrations of these small particles causes the osmotic pulling of water across the retinal capillary wall in a manner similar to the pulling force that develops with the larger plasma proteins. And finally, the retina is also subject to the influence of intraocular pressure. Intraocular pressure is a type of hydrostatic pressure that would, to some degree, counteract the outward movement of water due to blood pressure. Another site of water movement in the retina is the retinal pigment epithelium, or the RPE. You may recall that the RPE cells and tight junctions by which they are connected form the outer blood retinal barrier. Excess water is moved across this barrier from the subretinal space to the underside of the RPE where it can be absorbed by the capillaries of the choroid. Although water itself is not directly moved by the RPE cells, solutes in the form of charged particles called ions are actively pumped across the cell membrane by the RPE cells, and where the solutes go, the water will tend to follow by osmosis. Water is also drawn across the RPE by the osmotic pull of plasma proteins and other smaller solutes found in the choroid. These solutes are not able to cross into the retina due to the outer blood retinal barrier. This movement of water across the RPE is made easier by the presence of tiny channels in the RPE cell membrane which are dedicated to the rapid transport of water. These tunnel-like openings are called aquaporin channels. A similar process possibly takes place in the Mueller cells. The movement of solute from the interstitial spaces near the neurons through the Mueller cell body to the retinal vessels may be responsible for the movement of water molecules out of the interstitial spaces and into the retinal capillaries. Like the RPE cells, Mueller cells are also equipped with aquaporin channels which are located in these areas. So using these aquaporin channels and the pulling force of the solutes, the Mueller cells are thought to work in combination with the retinal capillaries to help keep the upper layers of the retina free of excess water.